Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Some think the world is made for fun and folly. Claudia! Claudia! Here I am, darling. What is it? Oh, am I nothing? Nothing, and you were shouting like a banshee? Mm, just thought I'd say hello to you. Hello. Now, what do we do this afternoon? Well, I just put the baby to sleep. Why don't you? No, I'm not interested in sleeping. Good for you. Boy. Well, what do you feel like doing? Oh, I don't know. I'm tired of reading. I'd like to do something different. Well, there's not much different to do around the house, I'm No, afraid. not much. Only I knew how to play chess. We could play chess. Each game takes hours, I'm told. Ah, uh, chess is too quiet anyway. I'm full of pep. Oh, oh. <laughs> Say, why don't you call up somebody, David? Whenever I have nothing to do, I call up somebody. Mm, what for? To talk. Talking's a wonderful time passer away. Well, you ought to know. Why don't you call Roger at the office and talk business? He's probably busy. Now, you know he loves to talk to you. I bet he doesn't expect to talk to me on the telephone for days. Yep, yep, I might call him at that, find out what's going on. Stay where you are, I'll bring the t- telephone right to you. Now, I'm not a cripple, I can walk. You've got plenty of chance for walking from now on. You better make the most of this service with a smile business while you can. As of tonight, I am handing in my resignation. Here's the phone. Oh, thank you. You mean you're really going to stop waiting on me, hand and foot? Hand and foot, really. And I don't want you to think that I've enjoyed it any more than you have. Well, that's good. There's no reason why you should have all the fun out of my accident. But don't talk too long, though, David. Mama said she'd call us in the station so I can pick her up. It's the wrong time now. My gosh, it's almost two. I won't. Hello? Operator? I want to call New York. Mary Hill 17248, please. The world is made for fun and frolic. Oh, you're a lovely voice. But so was I. Oh, my number. Hello, hello. Yes, my number's Eastbrook 276, ring 3. And so was I. Operator? <laughs> Operator, what's the noise on this phone? You're singing. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Something the world is made for fun and fun. Oh, it's worse and worse. Hello. Oh, line's busy. Oh, oh, thank you, operator. Hmm. The line's busy. Everybody's busy, even the line. You can try again later. After Mama calls. You know, there's a funny noise on that phone. Oh, it's probably the connection, David. It couldn't be. I wasn't connected. You were connected with something, weren't you? The operator, at least. Claudia, I, I know when a funny noise is because of a connection and when it isn't because of a connection. How? It's just one of those things a man knows about. The oh, telephone, that's all. I see. It's a kind of a, a rattly noise, like a clip in a glass or oh. something. Oh, well, what's the difference? A great deal of difference. I, I don't like a telephone with a funny noise in it. Like a clip in a glass? Exactly. You think something's broken in it? Mm, probably. You think maybe it's because I dropped it on its head this morning when I was dusting? No doubt. Uh, you you dropped the phone? I just told you I did. Well, you don't have to look at me like that. It's not a crime, is it? Mm-hmm. David, mm-hmm. what are you mm-hmm. smiling at like that? What are you thinking? Mm-hmm. You dropped the phone. Then definitely something is broken inside. But it works, doesn't it? You've got the operator, so what's the difference? It rattles like a clip in a glass. I know. You said that already. I'm going to fix it. You? Why not I? Well, you're not supposed to fix telephones. Who says? The telephone company. They have special people to do that. Experts. Uh, Yourself. They have, and you know it. The special people you're talking about happen to be troops of young men, mere boys, with a little training and half of my intelligence. Poor things. Yeah. And if they can do it, then so can... David Norton. Well, David Norton hasn't any training, and a little training goes a long, long way. Mm -hmm. So does intelligence. A longer, longer way. But you wouldn't know. Anyway, you're not going to do it. Mama's going to call any minute, maybe in in, in two minutes. It'll only take me two minutes. All I have to do is take it apart and find out what's broken and put it back together again. Simple. Oh, very. 
And if anything happens to my telephone, I'll never forgive you. I love telephones. Well, nothing's going to happen, I see. Now, the mouthpiece unscrews just like this. Here we go. David, um, wouldn't you rather read a book? Uh, no. Well, why don't you try calling Roger again? Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense now. I'm going to do this. David, um, the first thing the men do when they come in to fix the phone, I- I've watched them, is they unconnect it up. You know, that little box that's on the wall down, down there between the tables. <laughs> now, get me my tools. Your tools? Yeah, I need a screwdriver and a hammer and a pliers, probably. Oh. What if the phone rings? It won't ring if I unconnect it up, as you put but it. But what if Mama or somebody's trying to call us, and Mama is? Don't you trust your husband? I trust the telephone company more. And besides, a little rattle like a clip in a glass doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Not the least bit. I like it. And that's because you got clips in your head. All right, I'll go get the tools myself. You are like Niagara. Once you start, nobody can stop you. Mm-hmm. At least stay put on the sofa. I'll get the tools. Now, I'll have the whole business done in five minutes. And then, then we'll see who's so smart. Trust the telephone company more, do you? Hmm. I- I'll show you what kind of a man you married. You have gone mad. Absolutely, completely mad. And if you hadn't so nearly died two weeks ago, I wouldn't be so patient with you either. Something. I want you to know that all this is against my better judgment. When you want to get something done, get an expert, I say. And so yes, do that's I. That's what I always say. Get an expert, a professional. And so do I. Oh, and so do this I. This is now, just, heavy. Just, just oh. wait till you see what I've done. There. I can't wait. Well, look. David, what are all those little pieces on the floor? The receiver. Oh, no. There, give me those tools. Now, I'm going to disconnect up the phone. I'm not going to look. Well, nobody asked you to. All those pieces, and haven't you found what's broken yet? Mm-hmm. If I'd found what's broken yet, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Well, I'm not so sure. This is like a disease. Once you start taking something apart, you go right on till it's too late. Now, speak for yourself, John. You know, you should have been a doctor. Don't mind if I call you John, do you? No, no, no. What's being a doctor got to do with this? You just love taking things apart to find out what makes them tick, just like a surgeon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, the lid's off. That is the stomach incision you've just made. See what I mean? You don't have to go any further with your analogy. Now, now these little wires, there they are. There's three. One, two, three, yep. One wrapped around a screw, a red one, a white one. Remember which is where, David. Mm-hmm. Now, Claudia, will you get out of my light? I can't, can't see a thing. That's right. Blame me because you don't know what you're doing. And stop breathing down the back of my neck, I will you? I am not anywhere near the back of your neck. Screwdriver, screwdriver. It's on your lap. Oh, there we are. Now, off comes a little wire, and then this one, now the third and last. Now, now we're disconnected. You sure? Yep, sure. Now we're isolated, out of touch with the world. But only for five minutes now. Stop worrying. But Mama's supposed to call. So? She'll worry. No nonsense. Mama's a big girl. David, hurry. I hate being without a phone. My little pioneer bride. No, I don't see what's broken in the receiver. All the pieces seem to be whole. I didn't drop the receiver, Dope. I dropped the other part. The other part? The part I... Don't know the name for the part with the dial thing on it. Then why didn't you say so? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with hearing a noise while you're talking. Well, how do you know? Does it? David, don't take any more apart. It's too late to stop now, I see. Oh, the bottom unscrews it like this. I feel like an orphan. Very simple, very simple. One more screw. <gasps> the bottom fell out. David, don't lose those screws. Uh, one's rolled under the sofa. Pick it up while I investigate You pick this it up. Thing. I'm not the one who needs occupational therapy. Mm. I'm not supposed to lean over. Since when? Since my concussion. Oh, now you remember. When there's something you don't want to do, then you remember. You you average man, you. <laughs> Three little wires, just like the one from the box. Fascinating pieces of equipment. <laughs> anything broken besides what you've done? Mm, looks all right to me. How can you tell? Instinct. David, please get your instinct to start putting it together again, please. What an old nag you are. I know, I admit it, but put it together anyway. All right, just to show you I know how, I will. Fine. And then you won't be nervous when I take it apart again. Again? Of course, I'm just putting it back together again <laughs> so Mama can call. 
Then I shall take it apart to fix it if it still rattles. Over my dead body. Now here's the red wire. It goes right around here. Did you hear what I said? Yes, you said over your dead body. Oh, well, I'll put the receiver together in the meantime. Think you can? Of course I can. Nope. The white wires. You sound as if you knew what you were doing. Misanthrope. You know, maybe you shouldn't have been an architect at all. Maybe you should have been a telephone man. Maybe I'm both, hmm? Clever. Now, one more wire and I can close up the bottom. Then the box on the wall. Oh, no, you don't have to tell me. And I'm hurrying as fast as I can, too. I ought to get you an electric train. That's what I ought to get you. Then you can play with it and leave my poor little defenseless telephone alone. You're such a possessive little woman. How are you and doing? So was, uh, I'm putting the wires back in the box on the wall, and I'm on the last one. I'm just yeah. putting the mouthpiece back on. Yeah. This is sense. You'd be glad when everything is back together again. You're such a little worrier. There. I'm finished. Mm-hmm. Just one moment. The world is... Do, 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 but do, I'm do, waiting. Do. There. So am I. Now, give me the phone. You'll see it's perfectly all right. I'll apologize if it is. You, uh, you feel safe in making that statement, don't very, you? Very, mm-hmm. very. Now, I'll dial the operator and we'll see how this phone works. Whether it works or not. Well, go on. Go on. Very funny, very funny. Mind you, I, I hope, it, hope it does work. Yes, I can tell. I'm not the kind of wife who hopes it won't work just to, to prove a point. No, you wouldn't do that. Dial ahead. Don't be nervous. Now, thanks. Well, I hear a dial tone. I thought you'd be interested. I am. A dial tone's half the battle, you know. <laughs> Hello, operator. No, I'm not making any call. It works? Uh, thank you. Thank you, operator. Thank you very much. I just wanted to hear your voice, operator. That, my love, was the operator. And she must think you're crazy. <laughs> what do you think I am? Crazy. I mean, brilliant. Mm. I really think you are, darling. David, you know, ordinary people aren't supposed to know how a phone works. That's very difficult. So yeah. that proves, darling, that you are not just ordinary people. Me neither. You're wonderful, David. Kiss me. Come and get it. Oh, eek! My eyes are closed. Tell me what it is. The telephone, David, is in a million pieces. When people come into your home, whether they're expected or unexpected... You like to be able to extend a pleasant welcome. That's always easy if you have a good supply of Coca-Cola on ice. When you say, have a Coke, it's as though you said, glad you came. Relax and share the pause that refreshes with us. Mr. King, what do you think of my son-in-law monkeying around with the telephone? Well, for for an architect, he didn't do too badly. Mm, Best of all, it's good to see David feeling better. And a phone is a small price for that. (laughs) Very small indeed. Still, I can't help wondering as to what he'll think of next to entertain himself. Well, you're safe tomorrow, Mrs. Brown, because tomorrow David will have plenty to think about. Really? And uh, you'll have Jared Tucker to thank for that. He brings David a gift. And, uh, well, see you tomorrow. I will indeed. (laughs) Goodbye, Mr. King. So long, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.